So, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, our new um, Expand DH uh, webinar. This uh, webinar, uh, we will talk about uh, the unlocking the benefits, the real world application for the European electronic healthcare record exchange format. So, our discussion will be targeted around the European electronic exchange format and how this can be. Uh, adopted, and we have a, a good group of speakers I will present you shortly. Uh, before starting, just let me introduce a little bit some housekeeping rules so that we can organize uh, this webinar in, an, in, an, in a good way. So first of all, in order to um, support the discussion afterwards, just unmute yourself uh, when you want to speak or ask a question. So don't have your microphone on all the time. Um, also, there is a Q&A box, so please try to put uh, your questions there as the presentation are, are ongoing, uh, so that we can all address all of them at the end of this webinar, so that all questions are uh, answered by our uh, experts that will present. If you want to address the question to a specific uh, person, so please uh, direct your question to one of the presenters. Also, I would like to note that this webinar will be recorded. Uh, next slide. So uh, I'm Alexander Berler. I uh, work as a director of consulting service at Gnomon Informatics, and I will be your moderator here today. Here is our agenda. Um, so initially, uh, we will have three short presentations for our three distinguished speakers. So Esther Pilen, Kathy Apostolidis, and Michael Strabin. Then uh, we'll make a discussion with uh, our three speakers, and uh, at the end, uh, we will uh, have a uh, hopefully, hopefully vibrant discussion with all of you, uh, trying to respond to your questions and provide as many answers as possible. So uh, let's start. Next slide. So just one minute, a few things about uh, our project, Expand the H. So Expand the H stands for uh, Expanding Digital Health through a Pan-European Electronic Exchange Format-based uh, ecosystem. So it's a two years coordination and support action uh, financed by the uh, Horizon Europe Framework Program. We have 26 uh, digital health partners from various domain, a very well uh, formed uh, consortium. And our overall aim is to, um, to prepare, support, and empower individuals and organizations 
to be ready to adopt the European electronic infrastructure record exchange format via an established network of networks and a vibrant ecosystem. So we are trying to bring all the important people around this topic in the same room and try to provide solutions so that uh, this exchange format can be adopted uh, in parallel of the upcoming electronic uh, health data space, uh, European health data space um, regulation. So next slide. With this, I would like to give the floor to our first speaker, Esther. Uh, she is a senior international advisor at NICTIS, a uh, uh, competence center for digital transformation management in healthcare in the Netherlands. So, um, is Esther, please give us our view about the exchange format. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction, Alexander, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, my name is Esther Balen. I work at NICTIS. And just to introduce very shortly NICTIS, um, what we do is uh, we contribute to the uh, national vision and strategy uh, for healthcare, healthcare information management in uh, the Netherlands and also to the architect architecture that supports uh, the system. Uh, we provide advice and share knowledge with the relevant stakeholders within the healthcare sector. Um, and lastly, we also develop and maintain standards uh, to support the healthcare processes in the Netherlands. Our motto is to have better healthcare through better information. And here it says Europe, but as a national competence center, we focus on uh, the Dutch situation. But of course, it's um, my task and of uh, the team, of the international team and other colleagues, also to look at the connection with what's happening in Europe and to make sure that the healthcare information can be received in the Netherlands and also vice versa. Next slide, please. Yeah, with this um, journey, I would say, uh, I would like to share with you what we currently are working on in the Netherlands to, to get this connection with Europe. So last year in February, um, we can say that we are in, that we have a national contact point for eHealth uh, in the Netherlands. And for example, here you see a Portuguese family who leaves Portugal to go on a city trip to Amsterdam. But unfortunately, the father gets involved in an accident and needs uh, care in a Dutch hospital. So the healthcare provider is uh, contacting the national contact points in Portugal and uh, requests the patient summary, the European patient summary of uh, the father. Um, via the national contact point of health in Portugal, uh, the patient summary is sent to the Dutch physician and she can uh, check uh, based on this the healthcare status of uh, the father so that the uh, physician, the Dutch physician, can deliver the best possible care to, uh, to the father. And in the end, the father or the whole family uh, goes back home to Portugal. Um, so this is the journey that we are uh, capable of uh, doing in real life, uh, receiving uh, European patient summaries from three countries currently, from Czech Republic, Portugal, as I said, and Luxembourg. And the next program is already set up to also send uh, the European patient summaries from Dutch citizens uh, whenever they are in, um, in other European member states when they need healthcare. Next slide, please. Um, yeah. Currently, we are in a really exciting period, I would say, um, in our country, because um, the Ministry of Health team, uh, together with a lot of stakeholders, uh, especially from the healthcare provider side, have been working really hard to set up a, a regulation or legislation, which is called VEGIS, on digital information exchange in healthcare. Um, 
like I think in many other countries, uh, digitalization of healthcare information is a bit lagging behind and is felt as a really problem um, by the citizens as well as the healthcare professionals. Um, and to drive this um, information exchange, uh, that's the goal of this legislation. And it has passed chamber last year in September and recently in April also in Parliament. And this Saturday it will come into force. So a lot of um, efforts are being done by many stakeholders at the moment to, uh, yeah, to really make it uh, happen. Um, the Vegas envisions a step-based step approach uh, for implementation and it will yeah, start this year um, and lasts until about 28, 2028. Um, with this step-based approach, it envisions um, to exchange patient summary data at, as first, uh, to have a, yeah, a generic set of data for a specialist care, um, conform, or compliant to uh, a national standards uh, that we agreed on in the Netherlands. So we agreed on the processes and also on the information that needs to be exchanged. Um, the same for a nursing discharge report, uh, medical imaging, medication, which covers a lot of uh, processes, I would say. So from prescription and dispensation, also um, realizing a medication overview. So that's really the citizen and the healthcare professional know what medicines um, are being used by this uh, particular person. Uh, it includes also lab results for medication process and adverse event monitoring. So it's really a broad process and uh, we are in the middle of implementing this uh, at the moment. And recently also emergency care uh, process was added to this uh, domains that have priority. The last point covers certification of EHR systems. So we want to make sure that uh, yeah, we prevent vendor lock-in and uh, also uh, to achieve real interoperability. So the information must be exchangeable between various systems. And for this, we have a, a certification process in place to make sure that we can actually test that the information is really going from one system uh, and can be um, processed by the other, the receiving system. Next slide, please. So with this said, um, which is, uh, yeah, an effort that takes already a lot of, um, of our resources and work from many stakeholders at the moment, there's so always uh, also, sorry, uh, the European health data space proposal. And of course, we, we have to look into that. We cannot uh, close our eyes for that. So to find out where we are um, from in the Netherlands, so we would like to have the position from the Dutch situation upon the uh, European situation, we are performing fit gap analysis. And as you can see, uh, a number of processes or domains, as you would like to call them, are similar. And so we are comparing um, upon the interoperability model. So on various levels, where are the gaps and where are the similarities? So we have a good understanding of where especially the gaps are and how we can best address those gaps and see if they are risks or if there may be yeah, nothing to, to worry about, uh, but in case there are, we see risks, that we can really uh, see how we can uh, anticipate to overcome the gaps. So this is a continuous process because also uh, the standards are still in development uh, at both sides. So at the Dutch, Dutch side, standards are being uh, developed and of course standards are never completely stable, they, they get updates all the time. 
uh, but also if you look at the um, European guidelines, for instance, we have now two new ones coming up for hospital discharge reports and one for medical imaging and reports. Uh, so we have to do our checks again, like what are the, the gaps and the similarities. Next slide, please. That was my last, yeah. So this is uh, helps us preparing for the, uh, the future and, and the connection with uh, the European uh, Healthcare Information Exchange. Thank you. So thank you very much, Esther, for providing us this uh, initial, um, uh, let's say, analysis and point of view from a competence center, how this issues are adopted uh, from a, a European member state. Now I would like to give the floor now to Kathy Apostolidis. Uh, she's the past president, chair scientific committee at the European Cancer Patient Coalition. And now I think it's important to see a little bit the view of the citizens and the patients, let's say. Mm -hmm. So we are all citizens and we are all potentially also patients. So I think that within this approach of designing uh, new services, uh, that will reuse the exchange format, the European exchange format. I think it's important from now on directly to start uh, by taking care and using the voice of the, the patients as well. So, Kathy, please, uh, the floor yeah. is yours. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Good afternoon to all. As Alexander said, I am the past president and chair. So I scientific committee of the European Cancer Patient Coalition and a long breast cancer survivor. And I have to uh, mention that since uh, early, I have been interested in what the digital health could do for cancer patients. So uh, my participation in uh, the project is uh, more than uh, meaningful uh, for me. Uh, we are going to talk about what is uh, the European Electronic Health um, Health record exchange format because it is uh, something, um, let's say, uh, difficult to understand for the average patient. We are going to see what are the four pillars that uh, cover patient needs, uh, three broad categories of uh, apps facing uh, needs of. Uh, patients, particularly cancer patients, and the key benefits that the European Electronic Health Record Exchange Format offers for patients and any other advantages. So uh, uh, could you please change the slide? Okay, so what is uh, the European Electronic Health Record Exchange Format? This is the official uh, let's say, um, term of what is it and uh, what we have uh, to um, keep in mind, it is that uh, the European Electronic Health Record Exchange Format is a set of principles and of specifications and process that allow uh, data to travel from one country to another, but also from one hospital to another and within regions. This is particularly important for cancer patients because our disease takes very long to get uh, addressed and cured, something like uh, a minimum of two to three years and often much longer. Therefore, it is very important for us to have access to our uh, patient records because usually before, uh, before digital health, we were and still are going in some countries to our medical appointments with a heavy bag of MRI, CT scans, uh, other records lab tests, etc. So this is history now 
with um, digital health and the electronic health record, which is already established in some countries, but not in all EU member states and uh, definitely not in uh, my country, Greece. Next slide, please. So what are um, the needs of uh, cancer patients, particularly uh, from uh, a European electronic health record exchange format? What do we need? Here, I have mentioned four such needs. They are much more, and here I have to mention that I have uh, participated in a European Commission expert group a few years ago, where we have designed uh, the um, criteria which sh shall govern mobile applications. But as these mobile applications for health were not all meant for medical purposes, uh, the criteria were not so strict, but nevertheless, among those criteria were these four. And for uh, cancer patients, interoperability and privacy are the key to why interoperability? Because we often have to move from the hospital where we are initially diagnosed and treated to an expert cancer center. And then we need to have all our tests, data and information moved from the, the initial uh, hospital where we were diagnosed and treated to the new one. And equally, privacy of our data is very, very important for cancer patients. Cancer patients are willing to share their data and their uh, biosamples for uh, cancer research and uh, for uh, getting uh, the care they need, but uh, they demand that uh, their data are treated with respect and privacy. Therefore, these two are most important for cancer patients. And also self-management, what does this mean? This means our ability to go into uh, our electronic health record and check uh, what has been uh, noted since our last visit, make sure that all the information is correctly mentioned, that data makes sense, and if something sounds not correct, that we have the possibility to make a note in the, the electronic health record so that the, our physician notes it when he opens it again. And collaboration. Collaboration is a great, great word. And it is the word that has um, also uh, reigned in our annual Congress that uh, was held uh, this last weekend in Brussels, uh, last Friday and Saturday. Collaboration was uh, the word of the day. Why? Because in cancer, we need the collaboration of many specialties, of many medical and other specialties, technical specialties, IT specialties, uh, human sciences specialties. So collaboration is very important for us among doctors and among doctors and patients. So which are the, the apps, the applications which are important for cancer patients? Those are um, that ask for individual patient data, the, uh, the applications that uh, provide a more personalized uh, user experience, the potential to input to an HR system, as I said before, and uh, the ones that enable better collaboration of patient and clinician in given medical conditions. And here I would like to refer uh, to the eSmart project that has finished in 2019, that was a digital uh, mobile application that patients, cancer patients could use when receiving chemotherapy and was enabling them to refer uh, their symptoms to the research center and if uh, 
something went really bad, they could be called in to their hospital and get treated. This gives extra confidence, not only to the patient that during chemotherapy, his symptoms and his care is taken care of, but also to the physician to know that his patients are being taken care by the research nurse who notes everything that is going on in a given number of uh, patients. Next slide. So what are the key benefits of the Euro elect European Electronic Health Record Exchange format for patients? These are many, and I would like to mention that they it provides an accurate, up-to-date, and complete information on uh, patients at the point of care. It uh, enhances privacy and security of patient data. Uh, this is a very delicate issue here because we all know that the patient data have been retrieved from countries where they which had a very strict systems like the USA. So this is a very important point, privacy and security of patient data. And I know it has also been much discussed uh, within the European health data space, the joint action on uh, European health data space that has finished soon. Uh, they enable safer and more reliable prescribing. They uh, offer quick access to patient records for more coordinated and efficient care. They improve patient and provider interaction and communication, and uh, as well as um, healthcare convenience. It is also uh, very important to mention that uh, the European uh, Electronic Health Record Exchange Format enables uh, to promote legible, complete documentation and accurate streamlining, coding, and billing uh, within uh, healthcare systems. Finally, uh, it securely sh shares electronic information with patients and other clinicians, and it helps provider uh, more effectively diagnose patients, reduce medical errors, and provide safer care. Thank you. So thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, I think the message is very clear and very important. Uh, we need to focus on at least the first thing that I note here, and we'll discuss it later, is that we need to find a way to explain the exchange format in simple words for the patient so that they ask for it somehow. Mm -hmm. And now I will pass the, the floor to Michael Chabin, so he's a senior advisor for Digital Health uh, at Digital Europe, who is the voice of the digitally transforming industry. So I guess, um, Michael, you will explain a little bit how from the um, implementers part, so the people that can create, implement solutions to the other sides of the coin, let's say, uh, how we can do and what we, we should do so that we can have an applicable electronic exchange format very soon. So Michael, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Alexander, already for the introduction. Um, Digital Europe, yeah, we're a trade association based in Brussels, um, indeed the voice of digitally transforming industries. Um, let's go uh, right into the next slide, please. Uh, so I wanted to start first maybe with some, um, and, and thank you so much to the um, to Esther and to Kathy for setting, setting this up. And I think this is going to be an interesting uh, discussion, I hope. Um, the industry uh, uh, view and interoperability is, is, is relatively benign. We, we really welcome, um, uh, we really think that um, digital health um, needs more and better interoperability. Interoperability can lift all boats, so to speak, if we can uh, uh, the enable the digital transformation of healthcare, um, uh, a interoperability, a functioning ecosystem really opens up opportunity and services for new players. We all of us can think of how interoperability has enabled mobile telecommunications, banking, other digital industries, digital health is, um, healthcare is ripe for the digital transformation. Um, the reality of course is, is that there's been inconsistent 
um, adoption or demand for interoperable products. I mean, we have uh, we have in, in Europe a divided competencies in healthcare, um, and we can probably talk about how a European legislation um, can uh, can filter down in a, in a world where, um, of course, um, national and regional actors are responsible for healthcare um, and for the delivery of healthcare and implementing these digital health um, solutions. Also, of course, we have competing priorities. Health is different than other industries. We have um, we prize in, in, in healthcare, first of all, um, patient safety and, and efficacy. We, uh, these are the must-haves for, for products and services. Only then do we consider things like um, uh, connectivity and interoperability. And um, we, of course, also work in an industry that is under tight regulatory constraints. Um, but we want to, the industry wants to um, contribute to um, an interoperable ecosystem provided that we have standards and common specifications that are open, so they can't be proprietary. Uh, they need to be international. European is, is, is also fine and good, but our industry very often works in international uh, contexts, and we would like to sell products and services, not just in Europe, but internationally. And finally, of course, these, product, these specifications, uh, these standards need to be developed with industry. Next slide, please. Um, let's unpack a little bit what we mean when we talk about industry. I mean, we have different players with vastly different perspectives, requirements, and business models. We have, of course, makers of IT and cloud systems. Um, among them, EHR, EH, makers of EHR systems. I think they are probably the, the first, uh, the first um, uh, um, uh, clients, of course, of the EHR exchange format. But we also have makers of connected medical devices and diagnostic devices, the, the medtech industries. We have, uh, we have makers of large devices like imaging machines and hospitals, but also small devices, wearables, sensors um, that, that are patient facing patient, uh, that are worn by patients, operated by patients, including um, uh, smartwatches um, that have uh, CE marks. We, have, uh, we of course also have makers of software and apps including those that are CE marked, but also well-being apps that are not regulated under, under the medical device or in IVD regulation. So we have a vastly different, uh, vastly um, diverse uh, 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 landscape of industry players here, including big players, um, legacy players, and also startups and SMEs, innovators, um, and, and people who work in their garages on new products and services. Um, uh, industry delivers what market demands, and the market has sent mixed signals. I mean, I, I talked already about, about the competing priorities, um, uh, patient safety, efficacy, and accuracy, interoperability, of course, is further down the list. And so, therefore, um, makers of digital health products and services um, need, first of all, um, incentives. I mean, we need, we need uh, um, the, from the demand side, um, uh, the clear demand for interoperable products and, and, and services. We also need common, robust and stable common specifications. I mean, we and the EHR exchange format as detailed and defined in the EHDS regulation already has a nice list of, of these common specifications, including data formats, technical specs, um, standards and profiles for the exchange of electronic health, health data. And then, of course, we also need testing mechanisms and conformity assessments. Esther, I note with, with, um, with uh, um, uh, great interest that you, of, of course, also have those, those types of um, uh, features built into the Vegas um, uh, legislation. Um, next slide. Uh, and my final slide. Um, the role of the EHI exchange format, and let's step uh, back for the moment and acknowledge we probably need a better term for this. Um, this has been um, this has been a term that is uh, that is, I think, in in need of disruption as well. We need to find a better term that rolls easier off the off the tongue. Um, uh, so far, um, industry has looked at the EHI exchange format with what I could call um, benign indifference. I mean, we've seen. Uh, EHR specifications, uh, EHR exchange format specifications uh, advanced in projects like XE Health and now Expand DH. Um, but these projects have not yet translated into actual use or demand. Um, 
Uh, so far, my health at the EU has so far barely managed to establish 11 links between member states to member states. Um, uh, I note, of course, what's happened in, in the Netherlands, that there is an effort now to match, um, to translate the EHI exchange format into national legislation. We need more of that. And I think we've seen also already in Expand DH um, countries like Greece, Hungary, Portugal, Slovakia, and others um, uh, look at these developments. However, the major players look at bigger, bigger national markets. Um, uh, uh, so, for example, German makers look primarily to Berlin, and we haven't seen EHR exchange format make a, make a splash there. So, so far, the EHR exchange format is not quite yet there, and, and it has not yet filtered down to national specifications or procurements, where then industry looks, um, looks up. And I know, I know that um, I need to come to an end. What we now need, I think, in, uh, to drive forward to advance the electronic health record exchange format adoption is collaboration. The EHDS legislation contains what we what I would call new levers of interoperability because they require, um, they empower the European Commission together with member states to um, develop specifications via delegated acts. Um, EHR vendors will be required to comply um, with, with the EHR exchange format by 2027, 28, and I think, and I saw we're in the Netherlands, you're already looking at EHR certification, and that's a great sign, but that's only for the Netherlands, and we need to make sure we need to avoid um, a, an EHR cert exchange format for the Netherlands and one for Germany and one for uh, yet the other countries. We need to move towards a harmonized um, uh, way to certify these. Um, well-being apps, medical devices may then filter down. I think um, this we will see a filtering down of a trickling down of these interoperability specifications. So there is a powerful signal from the from the Commission from the European level. It now needs to um, travel down to the national level. Um, so we need now collaboration with industry involvement and of course patience. Uh, but let's move forward. And I think the European Commission and member states together have given us a powerful goal to move forward to. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to hand over back to you. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. I think um, we got the, the impression of how we see this from the, um, the market side, from the industry. And uh, we need to think how we could should, what we should do so that it's more attractive also to the market side. Okay. So, and I, I saw that you mentioned the term rebrand. I think uh, the rebranding of the term of the exchange format is a good point that potentially could be also a point and a topic of discussion within Expand DH. We have invented quite a lot of new terms. So I think it is probably a good task that we can achieve so that it's more uh, attractive to all the uh, members of the ecosystem. Uh, so that point is taken, at least from, from my side. Now, I think we can move to the next topic and the, uh, let's say, discussion. So, um, so for the, in parallel of this, let's say, short discussion that we'll have with the three speakers, try to analyze a bit more in details what they have presented to us. Please use the Q&A uh, button to give your thoughts and your questions so that we can also uh, take them into account and try to respond to as many as possible uh, of those. So, I will try to make some initial, let's say, questions to the three uh, experts and speakers. So firstly, I would like to ask Esther. Um, Esther, you are from a, a national e-health competence center, probably one of the most advanced one. You have also uh, a good support of legislation. So, but how do you see what is where, where should a competence center should put the effort so that we can increase the adoption of the electronic exchange format? So, in other words, how can we reduce uh, and control the challenges that you face in your daily work to increase the adoption of the exchange format? Yes, thank you for this question, Alexander. Um, and indeed, the the suggestion for a rebrand could be a good one. But I think we also need to describe and make clear what exactly we mean with the exchange format. What does it entail? Because it's a broad concept and it's not 
completely clear to everyone, I think. Um, the first step, in my view, would be to create awareness, just uh, share uh, knowledge on, on the exchange format, tell people that it's out there and uh, uh, stress the benefits it can bring that uh, Kathy already nicely uh, shared with us. Um, so to open up the eyes of the um, stakeholders in your countries, because yeah, in my experience, people are very much focused on what's going on in their country or even in their own region or uh, maybe institutes or organization. Um, but it's good to yeah to create awareness and and to let see let people see that there is a, a healthcare world around um, your own country and and that you can actually use this uh, when you try to connect. Uh, with the European or even international um, information flows, to uh, to put it very broadly, um, we are so used as customers to to travel and have all data of our bank details, of our I don't know food that we buy. Uh, we are very much used to that. That it's there everywhere. It's just available, and it's a big. Uh, yeah, opposite, the opposites in, in healthcare. And if you think health, your health is your biggest asset, in fact, then it's kind of strange that it's not the case. So, yeah, to broaden the perspective and, and explain how uh, the European exchange format can, can facilitate this, I think is, um, is a good first step. And it's, of course, uh, simpler said than done because there's a lot of effort needed to to make it really a reality um but it all starts with uh, i think uh, the awareness and uh, think yeah more in a broader way than uh, than just your own country um and i can only embrace what uh, as well as kathy and michael stressed very well uh, is collaboration so try to find your peers, um, exchange experience, look for good examples where it works and learn from that and take it from there. Okay, so I guess that the message from what you say, Esther, is try to uh, increase adoption by selecting the right use cases that will trigger the needs of patients, citizens, I mean, and also uh, aligned with the possibilities of the wider market to provide such services. So we need to be pragmatic and uh, advance in a step-by-step -step approach. I think this has been clearly depicted also in your national strategy, if I understood correctly. And this is how we are going to proceed. And I understand that this is your recommendation for any other uh, similar competence that will have the responsibility of somehow enforcing the exchange format in their own, own country. Now, going back to, to, to Kathy, uh, you're always a specialist in providing the right messages and try to enforce what patient uh, needs. So um, my view is, since we are here trying to create the right, let's say, um, discussions, discussion groups, or uh, Xnets, as we call them in, in our project or other ways, I think it's important to see and have your recommendations how the patient association could help us promote correctly uh, the exchange format or a rebranded version of it. So I guess in all our internal, but also uh, open discussions, uh, your word or other patient association as well. And I would like to have your uh, recommendations of how can we um, use the patient voice to advance and pass the message to also the politicians and the industry. So that yeah. we have all the voices aligned. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, Alexander. This is uh, a really an important question because, uh, um, particularly in complex diseases like uh, cancer and other similar, uh, very serious diseases that extend over a very long period of time, uh, then uh, you have. Uh, different uh, needs um, than uh, in other uh, therapeutic areas. For us, 
because cancer is such a complex disease which needs so many different specialties to collaborate together. It is very important to have a common space to collaborate. And this common space is uh, the uh, European Health Record. Uh, there has been a first step in that uh, with a smart card. That's uh, the survivorship uh, care card. This is a new project. Uh, the Europe, the electric the European Electronic Health Record format is another big project. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's the basis of all of the other projects because without it, we cannot talk digitally among us. And in cancer, where we have to transfer from one hospital to the other, and don't forget that in cancer, we have the European reference networks that are digital entities, which are very specialized in specific cancers. How we are going to talk among us, talk, I mean, digitally, in order to, uh, collaborate with the ERNs, with patients to make use of the cross-border health care, the European electronic health record format is the basis for it. So uh, for us, uh, cancer patients, this is very clear. We want to collaborate. We want to share with the project team um, specificities from various cancers, because not all cancers are the same. We want to share the knowledge we have from the practical side of uh, um, transporting big bags of uh, uh, documents, medical documents and data. And we want to share it with the project team. And of course, as uh, a big European umbrella organization. We have 470 members in the 28 EU member states, the UK and far beyond, as far as Chile and Japan and Australia. We can share the knowledge that is within in our members because what we want, yes, we want the European electronic uh, exchange format, but we want also at the same time to have uh, privacy, to have interoperability, to have uh, respect of our data. So we are uh, ready to collaborate uh, with the research work packages of the project to offer all the knowledge we can share with you. Thank you very much, Kathy. So uh, some important messages here, I think, to keep. One is try to take examples. So let's see if we can make examples of the use of the change format for cancer patients and try to see how those specificities could be somehow managed through this uh, exchange format. Mm -hmm. Uh, the other thing is open collaboration and knowledge sharing. I think this is well, well uh, established and formed in the project, and yeah. I think we will advance a lot on, on this on, on this topic. Now, uh, Michael, you somehow represent the industry here, whatever that means. You try to, yeah. to frame it a little bit. Um, and uh, we know that usually the industry is the one that is doing always the, the hard work at the end of the day, trying to find solutions. And um, we know that all these things, they take uh, time. Uh, we know that at the European level, we are trying to create a European digital single market. So I think, what are your thoughts on this? How can we uh, use the exchange formats and the new regulation to try to move a little bit faster in this domain? Uh, and what should we do to try to trigger the attention of the industry in that sector? Meaning that probably if we want the exchange format to be adopted, uh, the, let's say, investments and funding from the governments and the commission won't be enough. We also need to have uh, some new innovations from the industry side. And uh, so I think that's an important topic. We saw how the industry reacted immediately in the COVID circumstances, which means that I need there is capacity to move faster. So what is your view on that? 
um, boy, that's a big one. I mean, let's first acknowledge that, um, that uh, uh, there is movement at all, because for a very long time, uh, the commission, many actors have looked at um, digital health as the, as the um, sector that has not really been affected by digital health, uh, by, by, digi by the digital transformation. And it's partly because of this persistent lack of interoperability, because nobody, there was no dominant market actor like in, in consumer electronics. There were, or like in videos where industry could simply impose it. We just haven't had that in, uh, in healthcare. Um, and so finally, the commission in, the two, in 2019, with the publication of the EHI exchange format recommendation said, okay, look, maybe we do need to do something here. And now, of course, with in 22 last year with the EHDS, uh, there is now an appetite for the commission to accept a role um, and to work with the member states together um, to work on common specifications. Um, and um, I think so now at least a goal, a vision has been set. Now, um, moving even faster, I think we need to be um, realistic. It will be a, a long travel. I mean, let's consider for, for a moment here, I invoke the, the mobile communications um, world. Back in, two, in, in 1990 or so, when the commission came together and said, let's develop some, uh, some GSM standards um, for, for international roaming. Um, the world was very different and it took a very, very long time for, um, for GSM to be the accepted universal standard for mobile communications. I think uh, South Korea, I think, uh, moved, uh, took until 2010 or so before they said, okay, let's also move to GSMA. So we will see um, fits and starts, uh, but a direction has been said. Um, if we work together and if we work um, with member states that are also um, uh, working in collaboration, in, in coordination with the Commission, like the Netherlands are doing now, like other smaller member states are doing now, then I think we can travel to that destination faster. I see a, a, a question um, uh, posed here. Um, will we have to have two different certifications? Probably for a time we will, because there are too many specialties, too many um, uh, idiosyncrasies perhaps in the Netherlands that distinguish it from Greece, distinguish it from Bulgaria, distinguish it from Germany. So we will see um, an EHI exchange format setting the general direction and national member states moving in that direction, but with the obvious intention to move towards, uh, towards a, a common European certification. So we will need to have mechanisms, we need to have collaboration, we need to have industry input, but if we um, can, if, and if more member states can follow the Dutch example um, and that of other smaller member states, then I think we get to that um, faster. So bottom line is this collaboration takes it, a common vision um, is needed, um, and uh, a lot of goodwill among all actors. And then I think we can move this, um, move faster together. Thank you, Michael. So we don't have a lot of time. We have four questions. I think some of them, I think that Michael tried to respond to the question of, uh, of Michael on, on the Q&A session. And I don't know, Anderson, if uh, he also somehow replied to your first question about the alignment in the industry. I think that he made a quite substantial effort to, to do that, trying to speak about collaboration. Um, obviously, we are a project that we want to connect with other projects. So I guess, again, Anderson, you are asking here from the audience if there are other projects that we uh, would like to get from the list. So please, people, uh, that participants, if you think that any project that you are working on or participating at any level uh, please send this information to us, especially to Anderson as the project or the, and to Enrique Martins, so that we can incorporate this in the discussion that we have internally. Um, I don't know if one, any, one of you would like to uh, mention anything on the different questions raised. Uh, there is also a question from Diane uh, about how we are going to work with other projects. Um, so. Obviously, uh, that's a topic, and I think within the project, we have already think, thought about collaboration with other projects, mm -hmm. the joint action on other, but I don't know if Esther or Michael, you would like to say a few things about that mm -hmm. before we close. And mm -hmm. Kathy as well, you're welcome to. 
Uh, well, I am just thinking uh, we have uh, in among uh, the 31 projects in which CPC participates now, there are projects in which uh, uh, we could talk about uh, the, Euro the importance of the European electronic health record. And this is the CCI for EU, the Comprehensive Cancer Infrastructures for EU, that is the project that will set how, uh, how the infrastructures will be developed. And when talking about infrastructures, we are talking about, um, as we are talking here, about infrastructures in IT, infrastructures in training training for uh, doctors, training for patients, uh, organization, all of that is uh, needed for making the comprehensive cancer centers to operate. So among those, of course, the, uh, Euro, the electronic European health record for exchange format is basic. How all of these complex systems of uh, comprehensive cancer centers will operate without it. So um, it is not mentioned yet. Uh, we have discussed about uh, a collaboration with the European Health Data Space, but indeed, uh, uh, talking about it today, it's a good opportunity to raise um, the flag and say, hey, uh, in the next uh, consortium meeting that uh, we should invite uh, the uh, um, electronic uh, health uh, record, <laughs> um, uh, electronic health record exchange format people come here and tell us about infrastructure for comprehensive cancer centers. Okay, so that means that we have at least of 30 projects that we can discuss together. And see yes, uh, we have, but I mean, uh, this, this one because is the, the comprehensive uh, infrastructure, comprehensive cancer centers infrastructure for EU is basic. We are going yeah. to design what infrastructures the comprehensive cancer centers will need to operate. And this is basic. Okay. Now, thank you very Alexa. much, Kathy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael. I said, if I, if I may, and also looking at Dimitro's um, uh, question here, um, there is one thing about uh, collaboration with projects and projects mm -hmm. taking this forward. Um, but uh, what I really want to uh, stress here, what is really new here is that with the EHDS regulation, there is now the power of, of legislation. And with the, um, with the developments in uh, the Netherlands and other member states, this legislation now translates into actual procurement. So mm -hmm. for a very long time, industry could just sit here and, and just watch or ignore uh, mm -hmm. what, was, what has been happening in projects. Mm -hmm. But I think now we see the power of regulation. So we're, we're seeing a, a discussion change, a discourse change from adoption to actually compliance. And once this, uh, these, uh, these specifications translate into actual procurement, you will see heavy, heavy, um, uh, uh, you will see industry moving in that direction. Because the other thing that the EHDS legislation unlocks is investment. There will be lots of investment now. Now that the direction is clear, uh, regional, national members, uh, uh, healthcare systems will now start investing in infrastructure. And uh, that will, of course, benefit us all. Thank you, Michael. I think we responded also to Dmitro Bachenko's question uh, on this. So thank you very much for that. Esther, there's one question I think directed to you, but probably you can type it in the, in the response. Uh, they, they are requesting for a link to the uh, Dutch legislation. So if you can provide that, I think we are then have responded to all the questions somehow. Yeah, sure, this, I can. Thank you very much, Esther. So I think uh, that we have reached our goal in uh, making this initial uh, discussion. So some points, I think uh, I have tried to summarize some of the points during the discussion. So as said, this session is recorded. So we'll try to gather all those points and try to analyze them and present them to all of you that participated, but also to those that have not participated yet. So don't hesitate to contact us at any moment. Uh, please use the QR code if you want to see what how we are working and uh, access the different lists the webinar series on the social media. Uh, also, uh, 
we are going to create uh, and stay tuned with the project uh, a community of doers that will have both the industry and the, the patients involved. So maybe some of the discussion and the, the, the points that Kathy raised, we'll try to discuss in this community of doer. So very soon we will have news about that. And maybe it's going to be the topic of one of our next webinars, how we're going to work and work together in a co-creation approach, trying to uh, learn by example and uh, advance. Of course, as Michael said, the regulation is important. And I think that in, in steps a little bit in the carrot and the stick approach, I think that the industry will be more interested in adopting uh, those standards. So with this, I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, and I hope to see you all in our next uh, Expand the Age webinar. Thank you very much for participating and I hope it was an interesting session for all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.